So the five most common causes of sciatica, what I usually see, number one, disc degenerative disease, DDD. Number two, disc herniation. Three is spinal stenosis. Four, spondylolisthesis. Five, piriformis syndrome. So number one, disc degenerative disease. So in this condition, there's a loss of disc height. So you can see above, there's a healthy disc. It's nice and thick, full of fluid. And below it, there's a degenerative disc. It's loss in height. There's less space for that nerve to come out of. So then you can see also in that degenerative disc, there's osteophyte formation. So with a little bit of grinding, wear and tear, the bones become uh, like spurred. Uh, and then the disc, they don't absorb as much water anymore. So your shock absorber, like in your car, doesn't work as much. So you get more wear and tear. So it's really common in those over 60 years old. You'll often notice pain with lifting heavy objects. And it's really common, and the dead giveaway to know is you have morning stiffness and soreness, which actually improves as you get moving. I, one of my favorite things, you guys might have heard me say it before, is motion is lotion. Um, so as you get moving in that first 30 minutes or an hour in your morning, it'll get better. This is likely the cause. Number two is disc herniation. So usually about... 95% of the time, it happens at the L4-5, L5-S1 segment, which is right at your very low back, right before your tailbone, right down low. Um, so yeah, this is the most common region. can be degenerative, occurring with age and wear and tear. Usually what happens is it occurs from like spinal overload when, you're when your back and your spine aren't ready or can't handle those forces. So it's really common in those a little younger, 30s to 50s. So I want to show you guys a, a good test for a self-diagnosis that you can try at home. So you can follow along. You can try this with me. So there's two you can try. So the first one's called a straight leg raise, and the other one's called a slump. So let me take you through these. So what you want to do for your slump test is you want to find somewhere comfy where you can sit. And then what you want to do is, this is the first time you'll, and only time you'll hear me say bad posture is okay. You want to slump over, bring your chin down to your chest, and then you want to extend your foot all the way out. If you feel that reproduces your pain or your numbness tingling or your symptoms in your leg, likely you have a disc injury, okay? If you lift your head up and it gets better, that's indicated that yes, that's a disc injury. If you bend over, it gets worse, disc injury. The other way you could try this is if you lay onto your back, you can get somebody to help you or you can lift your leg up. Same thing, if you get some radiating symptoms or it reproduces your sciatic pain, you can bias it, you can bring your chin up if that makes it worse, likely that's disc or neural involvement. You bring it back down, it goes away. It's a positive sign that there's some disc involvement. <laughs> Everyone always likes to ask me about uh, if x-rays or MRIs are necessary. And a lot of times I say no. Um, we can find that out a lot of times without having to put you through radiation. Usually 20 to 30% of disc bulges are actually asymptomatic. So you might not even know you have them, to be honest. Number three is spinal stenosis. So what happens in spinal stenosis is there's narrowing of the spinal canal or intervertebral foramina. So where that nerve root comes out, there's actually less space and it gets pinched on more. So my analogy is always the train that comes through the tunnel. The tunnel is nice and wide. The train can make it through the tunnel easily. If that tunnel is squeezed down, the train gets stuck. There's not as much room for it to go through the tunnel. So again, you might have some changes in bladder, bowel symptoms. You get some pain and weakness in your lower extremities. So the dead giveaway for spinal stenosis, guys, something that really helps is if you bend forward, if you're doing anything into this flexed position, it actually creates space and opens up that area for the nerve to breathe. So if you find better sitting flexed positions, likely you have some spinal stenosis versus if you do these extended positions, it actually pinches down on it, creates less space. So if that makes it worse, then likely there's some stenosis happening. Usually it affects those most commonly in the years 50 to 60. Uh, again, it's the L4-5. Uh, L5-S1 nerve roots that are affected segments. Um, usually low back pain with this one is alleviated by rest 
It can be unilateral, meaning it goes down one leg, but a lot of times it's bilateral. So this is the difference, okay? So compared to DDD, which walking, standing, actually makes it, um, actually makes stenosis worse, whereas in DDD we said movement is good, it feels better, okay? Um, and then compared to a disc herniation or a disc bulge, flexion feels better, that flex position, whereas with a disc, extension will feel better, flexion will feel worse. So kind of keep that in mind when you're trying to self-diagnose, okay? So you can always, with this, you can get some paresthesia, you can get weakness, fatigue. Symptoms are going to radiate from your upper body and your back down into your leg. Um, usually gets worse with standing, with walking, as we suggested, and then better with sitting, with flex position. Um, so with this, there's a nice test you can try with this to try to diagnose yourself with some spinal stenosis. Besides the flexion extension kind of things that we were talking about, what you can try, it's called a single leg standing test. So you guys can follow along. You can try this at home with me. So all you want to do is you want to try to keep your hips level. And I want you to try to stand on one leg for 30 seconds, okay? At least 30 seconds. So what we're looking for is you can try both sides to see, but um, usually one side you'll find some compensation where your hip's going to drop, your back's going to get sore, you're radiating, pain symptoms are going to come back, right? So what we're doing is if we have some weakness, it's going to be putting more compression on one of those spots that are pinching on the nerve, okay? So try the 30-second standing test. Number four, spondylolisthesis. So it's actually in this one, there's a, there's a bony defect in what's called the pars articularis. So this is where uh, the body of your vertebra meets the spinal process. So again, most commonly affects the fourth and fifth vertebra, and everybody's probably wondering, Brayden, why is it always the fourth and the fifth? And it has to do with the anatomy and just the alignment of the spine. There's a lot more loading, a lot more force that happens. And actually, the, the canal that the nerve root comes out is actually smaller compared to the nerve size. It's a big nerve that comes through there. So that's, if you're wondering that why it's always affected that area, that's why. Um, so yeah, again, common symptoms, low back pain. And then pain, you'll have pain with extension. So that'll actually make it feel worse. So with this one, you might notice even, you might even be able to see it in your front or the back. There might be a little bit of a step. So you actually might see a little bit of a step deformity. That's really common in this. It creates a lot of instability. Um, with this, you can have any symptoms from, you know, just a little bit of a degeneration. You can have a bit of a fracture or a full, or a, a full break. Um, symptoms usually get worse throughout the day. Your muscles have to work really hard to try to stabilize that area. If they can't do that, then you get pain. Um, so you'll usually see like a flatter back. We usually have this rounded curve. If you're, if you're not seeing that nice round curve, that lordosis, um, then you have a sign that your back's flat. Um, so with, with this condition, it's kind of the, one of the worst ones, I would say. If you have DDD, if you have disc injuries, if you have spinal stenosis, it can actually lead you down this road to this injury, okay? So that's something we want to try to avoid. And number five, the piriformis syndrome. So you have a big muscle in your buttock. It's called your piriformis. What can happen is it runs right over that nerve. Uh, it can spasm. It can become tight and swell. It can cause pain. Uh, it also can put pressure, right, onto that nerve and irritate it. So you might have pain walking upstairs or with prolonged sitting. A lot of times I hear when people are sitting or commuting to work, if they're sitting on that nerve for too long, their leg will go to sleep and they'll go out and walk out of their car and their legs will feel like jello. Um, so that's kind of a, a sign you can do with that. 